If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fees. If you're on Xbox and need some gamer score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Another weekend, and to another edition of the podcast. Hello, my fellow Latter day Saints. Kenzie Retro, the moment entertainer here, the most inspirational moment in all of Asia. Back once again with another edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast, your one stop shop for all the latest gaming news, rumors, and of course, those points and trophies. We actually have some achievements for this week in honor of one of our games with gold. So, before that, we've got some very interesting news articles this week. Uh, Def Jam teasing a new game. We've got news on Monster Hunter Canada welcoming the first ever esports gaming stadium next year. That'll be interesting to read. Uh, we've got some new Xbox One backwards compatible games that uh, just got announced. Uh, we've got uh, PUBG for some bizarre reason becoming an eSport and you choose this over Fortnite because... Uh, we've got news on Nintendo, Grand Theft Auto 5, Walking Dead, uh, what else do we have? Uh, we've got a card game from Valve on the way as well, uh, Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery, uh, news on Rocket League, uh, Pokemon Go, and of course, in the battle of the free games, PlayStation Plus's games got in, um, announced on Wednesday. So, now that they've been announced, uh, we've also got the Xbox uh, Games with Gold. So we're going to go through those in the battle of the free games, and in the points and trophies in honor of uh, one of the one of the uh, games with gold. This used to be a game with gold, the first Forza Horizon game. And that, and we are going to be going through the DLC achievements for that one. All that coming up on this week's show. Before that, a big shout out as always to uh, Boomerang Rentals. Packages start from as little as $3.99 a month, and you can rent the latest games from $9.99 a month. Sign up today, get a 21 day free trial, and you get three free game rentals. There are no late fees. You can keep the games as long as you like, or keep them forever at a discounted price from the online store. Once you start renting, you're gonna start saving. Boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. So let's get into the news now. Here we go. Decided to. I've decided to include some. Uh, hey, what? I've decided to uh, have some uh, background music to uh, keep things interesting. So let's start off with Death Jam. And they are teasing a new game here. Now, what could it be? Here we go. Def Jam Recordings has been asking its social media followers for what they want from a new game, leading some to believe a new Def Jam Vendetta sequel might be in the works. On Twitter, the record label asked fans which modern star they'd like to see on the cover of a hypothetical new Def Jam Vendetta, before following that up by asking which city they'd like to see as a setting. 
in the style of sequel Fight for New York. Yeah, that's what the cover looks like. And I'll tell you this, the cover they put together, it does look, it does look pretty good. I can definitely get behind that. The Def Jam series began with Vendetta in 2003, followed by Fight for New York in 2004, and Def Jam Icon in 2007. Each game differed somewhat, with the common thread being that real-life hip-hop stars would be pitted against each other in fights. As pointed out by Game Informer, any potential new game would be unlikely to come from Vendetta or Fight for New York, new York developer Akai, Aki or how you pronounce it which has since renamed itself Sinsophia and pivoted out of wrestling games to make Nintendo-style savvy games. Vendetta in particular is something of a cult classic, so it'd certainly be a popular move if Death Jam dipped its toe into video games again. Back in 2003, IGN re said it represents both the culture and, clash to the, and the clash to the highest degree, awarding it an 8.9 review. Now that I can definitely get behind. It's going to be interesting to see where they go from here. I mean, if a new Def Jam game came out, I'd happily get it. Alright. Alright, we've got... News on Monster Hunter World, and it has a major crashing problem, but a fix is on the way. A Capcom representative says we are aware of the crash issue and a fix is already in the works. Hmm. And this is on PC Gamer. While our early impressions of Monster Hunter World's PC release were largely positive, they, they've soured over the weekend after 10 more hours of play and a plenty more between the rest of PC Gamer, it's clear that Monster Hunter World has a significant crashing problem. We reached out to Capcom for a statement and luckily the development team is aware of the issue and the fix is on the way. The exact timing hasn't been detailed, but we'd expect to see it before Monster Hunter World launches on PC on August 9th. Until it's fixed, here's what's up and why we think it's happening. Over the course of a four hour session, I saw one crash an hour. Worse when a crash occurs during a hunt. You lose all progress since the last save. The Monster Hunter world automatically saves after missions, but any significant crafting or item management between hunts goes down the tube. Quick, quick load times are something of a salve, but hopping back into a multiplayer hunt after a crash are too much time disqualifies you for the rewards attached to the quest. You'll still get to harvest the beast at the end, but no bonuses for you. Ouch. Considering that hunts can take away from 20, from 20 to 45 minutes, anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes, and that Monster Hunter World is a game fundamentally designed around repetition, it is a devastating, unacceptable problem. So why is it happening? We're not positive but all signs point towards undue stress on the CPU. Capcom has acknowledged and explained why Monster Hunter World is such a CPU heavy game, but it might be too dependent on our PC's brain in its pre-release state. After a few crashes, I kept Task Manager open on another monitor to keep to keep find a bottle a potential find a potential bottleneck and sure enough my CPU usage was at 100% at the time of every crash. It happened to me before. The rest of my hardware didn't see comparable spikes. Both my PC met minimum and recommended spec for most of the world and it's 
run smoothly, otherwise I hesitate to blame hardware outright. I get the impression this is a simple bug, as catastrophic as it seems. Somebody needs to proofread these articles. Multiplayer hunts might increase the chances of a crash, as it happened more frequently and on both ends in sessions with friends, but I've experienced them in offline sessions too. Again, this is all before public release. We're still waiting on updated graphics drivers and Capcom's promised fix. It's fairly common to see performance hiccups cleaned up before or shortly after launch, but these particular crashes are common and crippling enough to merit a PSA for anyone expecting a perfect launch. Here's a solution. Why not delay the game? Just delay it. Delay it until you get... Del delay it until the crash... Until the crash problem is fixed. We've got a couple of articles on PUBG now. PUBG adds bullet penetration system and new dynamic weather. Hands do not block bullets though. <laughs> well, duh! They're gonna blow your hands apart! If hands blocked bullets in PUBG, I might have fared better in my quest for a bear fist chicken dinner. They don't, obviously, but play around those battlegrounds. Long awaited bullet penetration system now targets forearms. Likewise, dynamic weather is coming to Erangel and Miramar. Both coming with PUBG's PC 1.0 update number 19, the former of which allows bullets to penetrate targets' bodies following its ballistic curve. A Steam community post further explains, the result will be different depending on whether the forearm is blocking more vulnerable body parts. When a bullet penetrates a forearm and strikes a more vulnerable body part behind it, the greater damage will be applied. Oof. In other words, if a player's forearm takes a bullet while blocking their head, the full headshot damage will be applied. This penetration system works for head, torso, and waist only. If a bullet penetrates the forearm, but no vulnerable body part is behind it, only the forearm damage will be applied. The developer Pub PUBG Corp as the bullet penetration is not applied to the legs. Forearm penetration is stable to shotguns, and as we've already determined, hands do not block bullets. They don't have hitboxes, see? As explained, as explained above, rain and foggy weather conditions were removed from Pumpy, Erangel, and Miramar maps when it left early access last year. Now, both return and are considered random in the event, that can create opportunities for strategic decision making. Fog might let you get the drop on unsuspecting enemies, for example, while thunder might mask heavy footfall. PUBG's PC 1.0 update number 19 also introduces a number of UI tweaks, performance adjustments, and bug fixes, the sum of which can be here. If you're yet to get into the popular Battle Royale craze, the following article might be of some use. Play around those battlegrounds versus Fortnite. Which one is right for you? Simple, Fortnite. Now, there are a few There are a few flaws when it comes to the bullet penetration system. The bullet penetration system should apply to every single part of the body. The way they've done this makes no sense whatsoever. I'm beginning to feel like... PUBG is becoming less and less realistic. I mean, 
What you need to understand is... If a bullet hits a bone, which it more than likely will, it will stop at the point of impact. And not just that. When it hits a point of impact, it's gonna start to slow down. Now, unless it's one of those sniper rifle bullets, then yes, it will more than likely go through multiple parts of the body. And then shotgun shells not applying to forearms? Um, if you shoot said forearm, it's going to get blown apart! Now, I'm no expert- I'm no expert in guns. But I do know realistic physics when I see it. And PUBG have just... wasted it. And that's why I will put unless and this is another reason why I prefer Fortnite. Because you don't have to worry about these realistic things. Or lack thereof in this case. And speaking of PUBG, it somehow made it onto the esports scene. And the esports scene choose this over Fortnite. From humble mod beginnings to a 17,000 capacity arena, player on the battlegrounds has put the battle royale genre firmly on the professional esports scene. So here we go. At 6 o'clock on July 25th. Crowds of fans are taking their seats in Berlin's Mercedes-Benz Arena, a 17,000 capacity venue in the eastern neighbourhood of Friedrichshain. Multicoloured lights dance around the arena and violinists play an ominous ditty as some pretend if parachutes descend from the sky on cables. Parachutes. The parachutists pick up toy guns, act out a choreographed duel, diving and ducking behind cars and crates before running off. A cylindrical scene in the centre of the stage rises to reveal 80 young men standing in a circle in front of banks of computers, the crowd cheers. This is the opening ceremony for the 2018 PUBG Global Invitation, the first global esports tournament for play around those battlegrounds. One of the best known games in the battle royale genre, the other of course being Fortnite. The tournament comes just 16 months after the game, more commonly referred to as PUBG, launched in early access on Steam and became an immediate hit, selling over a million copies in less than a month, making more than $100 million in revenue in its first three months. It's a big moment. The global tournament is the first major attempt to turn a battle royale style game into a professional esports with all the challenges of converting a game that comprises dozens of simultaneous players and a large dollop of unpredictability into a spectator sport. When are they going to do this with Fortnite? I would rather watch that. That's not to mention making the game stable enough to guarantee a fair match without any game damaging glitches, something that PUBG fans are never shy to complain about. And you don't hear these issues with Fortnite. But while it may not seem like the most obvious candidate for an eSport, yeah, I would rather replace it with Fortnite, PUBG creator Brendan Green, whose gaming screen name Player Unknown, gave the game its title. Says that was always his aim. I'd seen the eSports competitions and it was always 5 vs 5 on stage. He says, speaking backstage at the Berlin Arena, I thought, 
this is great, but I want to see more. I want to see a spectacle. I want to see 100 players fighting out in an arena. Once the dramatic opening music has faded, the, 20, the players, 20 teams of four, take their seats for the first round of play. The first two days of the tournament are dedicated to the third person perspective, TPP mode, with another two days for the first person perspective, FPP. Each has a prize pot of one million dollars. Why does that surprise me? The different mo modes affect strategy. TPP gives players a view that is broader than that of their character, essentially allowing them to see around corners, making it easier to see other players, but harder to hide from. Generally speaking, Asian teams have a strong reputation in TPP, whereas European and North American teams prefer FPP because they play too much Call of Duty. In the, in the arena, Asian teams fans are out in force. On the way in, I spot a young woman, young woman threading paper Chinese flags into plastic sticks for her friends to wait. Inside, the chi inside cheers are loudest for, ch for Chinese teams OMG and for angry men. And Korean teams Gen G Gold and Gen G Black. With a solid fan base for European team Liquid also making themselves heard. The tournament starts and the team get to work, discussing tactics over their headsets as a game map appears on a big screen for the audience to follow and the first round begins. Esports casters develop deliver a non-stop patch of commentary over the arena's public address system, recapping the action as it unfolds and offering analysis into team's movements. I would rather see Fortnite become an eSport. I'm serious. I will never play PUBG if my life depended on it. Speaking of eSports, same way. Richmond, British Columbia, is about to open the area's first ever stadium created specifically for esports. The gaming stadium facility will be considered the city's home for esports events and will play host to all tournaments, major events, and a smattering of others, other happenings within the esports world. The sizable arena will feature enough seating for up to 250 spectators, 40 gaming setups, a casual gaming arena open to all players, a broadcast facility with a full suite of options, and food and beverages to keep event attendees and staff happy and fed while they get down to some serious gaming. All told, the gaming stadium will mirror the same features seen in regular sports game facilities which only serves to drive home how popular the medium has grown to be. The massive complex is being built to help provide a location appropriate for gaming fans of all ages and skill levels to come, watch and participate in esports events. There will be op also be opportunities for players to enjoy leagues for all skill levels, as well as coaching for anyone who wants to sharpen their own abilities even further. The stadium, backed by My Esports Venture Limited, Estimates the stadium is currently planned for a grand opening in 2019, so just a few months away, potentially. We have so much in store for everyone and we are excited to continue making announcements leading up to launch, said my esports venture CEO Dan Cyback. This is going to change the landscape of esports in Vancouver. There are currently no mock-ups for the way the stadium might look, but we should be hearing more about it in the coming months. Now, all we need is to have these sorts of stadiums across the world, and in particular, maybe some here in the UK.
we've got two new backwards compatible games on Xbox One this week. Microsoft has rolled out another pair of backwards compatible titles for Xbox One this week. Two Xbox 360 installments in Ubisoft's Splinter Cell series have been added to the growing backwards compatibility library. Splinter Cell Blacklist and Splinter Cell Double Agent. Blacklist is the most recent installment in the Splinter Cell series, originally launching in 2013. It takes place after the events of Splinter Cell Conviction and introduces a number of skills and tools to Sam Fisher's arsenal. Like the Tri-Rotor Drone, GameSpot awarded the title an 8 out of 10 in, a, in their original Splinter Cell Blacklist review and, says, and said it has too many sweet adventures in store for you to miss them. Double Agent, on the other hand, was originally released in 2006. This installment marks the series Xbox 360's debut and sees protagonist Sam Fisher infiltrate a terrorist group. It earned an 8.5 in their, in their original review, in GameSpot's review, in which they said Double Agent's few keen twists on Splinter Cell single player gameplay don't result in a remarkably different experience from the previous game, though that doesn't mean it still isn't some of the best stealth action out there. Interesting. Right, news on Nintendo. Here we go. Nintendo's NES Mini is outselling the PS4 and Xbox One. Interesting. Remember Nintendo's NES Classic Mini? The, retro, the little retro console that could? It's currently enjoying a renaissance. Like sales boost. Bringing it to the top of the US console sales chart for the month of June. Originally released back in 2016, it quickly became one of the hottest gadgets of the year. Not In no small part due to the relatively relative scarcity of the product. Whether due to supply issues or a successful attempt at driving up hype and interest, it launched first with, incre with incredibly limited amounts of stock, then Nintendo threatened to cease production altogether. However, the release of another batch of consoles has seen the console rocket to the top of the sales chart for the month, outselling its cutting-edge PS4 and Xbox One rivals in the US, making sense of the numbers. Of course, there are economics to, to consider here. You're looking to pay just $60 States for the Mini NES compared to several hundred dollars for the Xbox One and PS4. In fact, were you to look at sheer revenue generated by the sales, the PS4 sits leagues ahead of the, S, uh, the NES Classic Mini thanks to its chunkier price tag. However, either way, it shows that there's consistent and feverish demand for access to Nintendo's library of classic titles. And before making Nintendo start to sound like a heritage company, its Mario Tennis Aces title for its latest Nintendo Switch console was the top selling title for the month across all consoles, even if it's a little so-so out on the court. And that just proves that... Uh the momentum for Nintendo ain't going anywhere any time soon. Right. DJ5 adds DJ Duo Tale of Us, new radio station, and vehicles. Interesting. Last week, Rockstar Games released their awesome new GTA 5 After Hours Upbeat, which saw the introduction of nightclubs. With that came the addition of DJ Solomon to keep people on their feet at your club, and some new toys to play with. Now, Rockstar is continuing to build on the update from last week. This week, players will be able to add DJ, DJ Duo Tale of Us as their resident DJs in their club, gain access to a new radio station, gain new vehicles, and potentially unlock a weapon for Red Dead Redemption 2. Tale of Us appearance in Los Santos will see them bring new exclusive tracks from their upcoming album, Afterlife. Tale of Us will also be performing brand new music tonight from Los Santos on their Facebook page this afternoon at 2.30pm Eastern Time. This was a couple of days ago. The tracks will be played 
both in the clubs and on the new radio station LSUR, Los Santos Underground Radio. The radio station currently features an official mix for Solomon and will from Solomon, and we'll see more tracks added over the coming weeks from other artists like the aforementioned Taylor Fest. If you're looking for new toys, you can buy two new vehicles such as the Blimp, which has already been available for club promotion missions, and the fancy, almost all-time Ennis Stratford. Uh, Stafford. Both are available to purchase in the game right now. Logging into the game by August 6th will also grant you a snazzy new t-shirt that reads Studio Los Santos. If you managed to get on the guest list earlier this month, you still got some treats coming your way with a clean $100,000 Galaxy and LSUR t-shirts. And exclusive liveries for cars such as the new Edith Stafford. Finally, Rockstar has teased a lost relic from the old frontier, coming to GTA 5 later this week. The relic has already leaked by data miners and has been revealed to be a stone tomahawk, likely crafted by Native Americans long ago. Previously, Rockstar added a revolver into GTA 5 that also gives you a bonus in Red Dead Redemption 2 when it releases. This stone tomahawk will likely do the same when you dig it up in GTA 5. More details are coming later this week. Right. So here we go, we've got the final season of The Walking Dead. Which, I read in an article earlier this week that it's the end of Clementine's story, and not the end of the series as a whole. Meaning the Telltale Walking Dead games are going to keep going. Telltale Games has released a free glimpse at the new Walking Dead adventure, but you won't need to put too much time aside to play. It's six years now since Telltale released the first Walking Dead game, and changed both their fortunes and their nature of video game storytelling. The original is still arguably the best thing they've ever done, at least in terms of non-comedy, and there's been a sense of slowly shrinking. And there's been a sense of slowly shrinking returns ever since. But they, but they're determined to go out on a high, and now you can judge for yourself with a free demo of the final season. Although, there's one catch. It's only 15 minutes long. The demo is available now and gives a quick glimpse at new features such as the over-the-shoulder camera, less QTE heavy combat system, and the new art style meant to more closely emulate the comics. The series has never been based on the TV show. Unfortunately, it's still the same old graphics engine underneath, although Telltale promised that it will be the last game to use. Episode 1 of the new 4 episode season starts on August 14th on Xbox, PlayStation 4 and PC, with a Switch version coming later this year. If you pre-order before launch, you can, all, you can also get access to all 19 episodes of the previous season, which is a pretty good deal. As to whether this is really the final season or not, Telltale has admitted that while it's not the last one, what what Telltale has admitted that while it's the last one that series. Hang on. As to whether this is the last. As to whether this is really the final season or not, Telltale has admitted that while it's the last one that you Proofreading, guys! Come on! Telltale has admitted that while it's the last one that character Clementine will be in, that doesn't necessarily mean they won't make new games with other characters. Even if they do, it won't be any time soon though, as the next games on their slate are Season 2 season two of The Wolf Among Us and Game of Thrones, plus their first Stranger Things game. 
none of which are expected to be released until next year. That. We've got a new card game from Valve coming up in November. Hearthstone and Elder Scrolls Legends should prepare for battle because Valve's new fantasy card game has released it. Artifact will launch on Steam on November 28th. If you've missed the hype, the TDLR, the TLDR, is that Valve has been hard at work on its first entry into the card game genre. WHY ARE YOU NOT GIVING US HALF-LIFE 3?! Showing it off to journalists back in March, the game was created by famed Magic the Gathering designer Richard Garfield and Dota 2 fans will recognise the champions and magic that make up its inspiration. Valve is promising the deepest gameplay and highest fidelity experience ever in a fantasy card game. Artifact will launch for $20 with over 280 cards, and players can build their collection by purchasing new cards on the Steam community market. PC Gamer said that going hands-on with Artifact decks was like managing three games of Hearthstone at once, each of which can affect the other in multiple ways, which are changing from moment to moment. Or, to put it another way, if conventional card games are like chess, which I know they aren't, then Artifact is the 3D version of which Spock plays on the Enterprise. Interesting. Whatever in the world that is. Valve is taking Artifact to PAX West later this month, so you'll be hearing more about it very soon. We've got news on the whole Harry Potter Hogwarts mystery. So here we go. Assuming Jam City sticks to its current pattern, tomorrow should bring... Today... Well, Thursday. This was this article was written on Wednesday. Tomorrow should bring with it a brand new story chapter for Harry Potter Hogwarts mystery fans to play through. To pass time until then, fans can fans can participate in the new fun in the sun events that will come to a close next week. Like past in-game events in Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery, Fun in the Sun is fairly straightforward. Players need to earn full stars in classes, and they will be rewarded with crests that will fill up a meter. At certain milestones, players will unlock special rewards that are exclusive to the event. So anyone who wants to unlock every single thing in the game will want to make sure they collect all 95 crests available during the Fun in the Sun event. Here are all the rewards that Here are all the rewards players can unlock in Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery Fun in the Sun event, and the number of crests required to unlock. Right, 1,000 coins, 15 crests. 30 energy, 30 crests. A summer outfit, 55 crests. 75 crests to get 20 gems, and summer headwear, 95 crests. As with past events like the Spirit of Fashion, different cosmetic items will be available depending on the gender of the player character. Besides that minor difference, the rewards and crest requirements should be the same for all players across the board. Harry Potter Hogwarts must be players that have completely caught up to this. Caught up to the story may want to wait until the new story content is available tomorrow before they worry about finding the sun. After all, then me. There may be shortened story-based classes where players can earn 5 stars in a fraction of the time it would normally take. Many story chapters in Hogwarts Mystery have added such classes, while tomorrow's fresh batch of content could be an exception, players may still want to wait and see. While reception to those events have not always been completely positive, it's clear that Jam City's plan to keep supporting Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery with special events on a regular basis. 
once Fun in the Sun wraps up, it will be interesting to see what the next couple of weeks brings for fans of the game. Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery is out now for iOS and Android mobile devices. Now right now, Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery is in my top 10 games of 2018, as it stands. So we'll wait and see what happens. on Rocket League and we've got an Ultimate Edition dropping on August 28th. Want a physical copy of Rocket League in, an old, in the old game shelf in the near future? Say no more! A new retail version of Rocket League is just around the corner. In partnership with Warner Brothers, Rocket League Ultimate Edition will be available physically for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One beginning on August 28th in North America. And August 31st in Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and a handful of other territories. The Ultimate Edition will feature 16 DLC battle cards, plus a collection of cosmetic items. What's in the box, you ask? What's in the box? Along with Rocket League, you'll find the Chaos Run DLC, the Revenge of the Battle Card DLC, Supersonic Fury, Aftershock, Esper, Marauder, Masamoon, Proteus, Triton, and Vulcan DLC battle cards, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice car pack, and DS and DC Superhero DLC pack. All of the above will be on disc or on cartridge, no code inserts in the site. The Ultimate Edition will retail for $40 for, in, for PS4 and Xbox One, and $50 for Nintendo Switch, or their original equivalent. And my word, the box art looks gloriously beautiful! And here are the list of countries that Rocket League Ultimate Edition will be available in. So, <clears throat> bear with me, I might be a one. Argentina, Australia, Austria, Belgium, Bolivia, Brazil, Canada, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Czech Republic, Denmark, Ecuador, El Salvador, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Guatemala, Honduras, Hungary, Ireland, Israel, Italy, Mexico, Netherlands, New Zealand, New Zealand Nicaragua, North. Norway and Panama, Paraguay, Peru, Peru and Poland and Portugal, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Slov Slovakia, South Africa, Spain, <laughs> Space Sweden, Switzerland, Turkey, United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom, Uruguay, <laughs> United States. <laughs> Why was I singing the I Like the Nations of the World song from Animaniacs? United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, Republic, Dominican, Cuba, Caribbean, Greenland, El Salvador, too, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Venezuela, Honduras, Guyana, and still. Guatemala, Bolivia, then Argentina, and Ecuador, Chile, Brazil, Costa Rica, Nicaragua. That's French Guyana, Barbados, and Guam. I still need to work on that part. <laughs> you know what? Let's have a little bit of fun. Let's see if I can actually do this. Here we go. <coughs> Here we go. United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru. Republic, Dominican, Cuba, Caribbean, Greenland, El Salvador, too. Puerto Rico, Colombia, Venezuela, Honduras, Guyana, and still. 
Guatemala, Bolivia, then Argentina, and then go to Chile, Brazil, Costa Rica, Mrs. Nicaragua, Bahamas, Capetra, Tigas, and Juan, Paraguay, Uruguay, Syria, Mashri, Guyana, Barbados, and Guam. Papa, I'm still messing up. Norway and Sweden and Iceland and Finland and Germany now one piece. Switzerland, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Italy, Turkey and Greece. Poland, Romania, Scotland, Albania, Ireland, Russia, Oman. Bulgaria, Saudi Arabia, Hungary, Cyprus, Iraq and Iran. There's Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Jordan, both Yemen, Kuwait and Bahrain. The Netherlands, Luxembourg, Belgium and Portugal, France, England, Denmark and Spain. Indian, Pakistan, Polish, Afghanistan, Thailand, Bahamas, Bhutan, Cambodia, Malaysia, then Bangladesh, Asia, China, and Bhutan, Mongolia, Laos, and Tibet, and Indonesia, the Philippine Islands, Taiwan, Sri Lanka, New Guinea, Sumatra, New Zealand, and then Vietnam, Tunisia, Morocco, Uganda, Angola, Zimbabwe, Djibouti, Botswana, Mozambique, Zambia, Swaziland, Tunisia, Ghana. I was doing so well! I was doing so well! I really need to work on it. <coughs> now, where were we? Pokemon Go! Pokemon Go just launched a new Pokemon, Spinda. Pokemon Go doesn't often launch a new Pokemon, and when it does, it will usually arrive alongside a wave of others, or at the start of a new month's raiding cycle. Not so last night, when the game quietly dropped Spinda as a brand new task reward for landing three curveball throws in a row. The spiral-eyed Pokemon, hence the curveball quest, had been one of the game's handful of skip speed. Unusual breeds with odd gameplay quirks which require more planning from developer Nier Niantic than usual to implement. In the main Pokemon games, Spinder, Spinder is notable for having randomized color spots dotted across its body. The mathematical total of all possible variants is just over 4 billion. In Pokemon Go, developer Niantic has simplified things a lot. By creating eight specific designs, it will release as separate games. As of last night, one is available. Every poker stopped with the task that with the, with the task offers this same spinder design. A little chap with a color with a color spot, which look like a goatee. In your in your poker go pokedex, it is listed as spinder's form number eight. All of which begs the question, when will the other Spinder Falls be released? Will it be daily? If number 8 is the start, are they counting down to something? Oh. Who knows? Whatever the outcome, it was an exciting launch for Pokemon Go fans to find a brand new monster dropped out of the blue, and one of the small handful of creatures with no set release date. Like Gen 1's Ditto, the missing mon from Gen 2 and Gen 3 all have spe special requirements attached. Smeargle, for example, permanently learns a move from the creature it is fighting. Clampearl requires specific evolution items. Ninkada sheds off its skin when evolving, which then becomes its own separate Pokemon. And Kecleon is invisible and able to change into the type of move it is being attacked with. Hopefully we see more of these soon. Last night's changes also brought in legendary dog Raikou, as this month's seven day field research reward and added shiny variations of doggy Pokemon, Houndour, and Snubble, also available via tasks. Very interesting.
Right, so that's the news out the way. And now it is time for Xbox versus PlayStation for August 2018. <laughs> So, since PlayStation 1 July, thanks to Heavy Rain, we are on to give PlayStation the upper hand, and they are the ones that will start. PlayStation, I'm just going to read out the games that they got. Um, we've got Mafia 3 and Dead by Daylight on PS4. There's also... We've also got Here They Lie, which is a VR game. Uh, well, VR. Uh, PlayStation VR required. Okay. And they've also got. Knowledge is Power, which is a PlayLink game where you can use your phone. PlayStation 3 have Bound by Flame, Serious Sam 3, Draw Slasher, and Space Hulk. Now on to Xbox. Forza Horizon 2 and For Honor on Xbox One. Xbox 360, they've got Dead Space 3 and Epic Mickey 2. What happened to the first one? Oh, the first Epic Mickey game was only available on the Wii. Right, okay, that clears that out. That clears that out, that's fine, that's fine. Now, both the PS4 and the Xbox One have some have some really good games, but I know I hate EA, folks. But on the basis they've got Dead Space Three as well, August goes to Microsoft. It is six two to Microsoft in the battle of the free games. Which means when September rolls around, Microsoft are going to have the advantage of going first. Nevertheless, there are 70 achievements with 1,500 gamers score, but I'm going to be going through two DLC packs, both of which have 10 achievements and 250 gamers score. And that means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies, indeed. We are going to be going through the tr DLC trophies for the first Falls of Horizon game, which is backwards compatible right now on Xbox One. Unless you've already, unless you've got it as part of the games with gold, you're going to need to purchase it. But we've got Falls of Horizon Two free right now. Now. On to the DLC achievements. Right, the first one is the Rally Expansion Pack, which is $20. So here we go. Mile High Club, 10 gamers score. Get a total of 1,609 meters of air in Horizon Rally events. Flawless Activity, 
Win a Horizon Rally stage without crashing or using Rewind. 15 gamer score. Covered in mud. Win a Horizon Rally. 20 gamer score. High five! Purchase all five Horizon Rally cars. 20 gamer score. Now that's a special stage. Complete your first Horizon Rally stage. 20 gamer score. Rally Rivals. Complete five Horizon Rally events in Rivals mode. 20 gamer score. Take her for a power slide. Obtain your first Horizon Rally car. 20 gamer score. Ghostbuster. 25 gamer score. Win 10 Horizon Rally stages in online multiplayer. Harder driving. Win a rally stage on hard opponent difficulty without using automatic shifting or driving line. 75 gamer score. Become the Horizon Rally champion. And the 1,000 club pack, which is free. 10 achievements, 250 gamer score. Here we go. My first challenge, earn your first medal, 10 gamer score. Ferrari fan, earn a medal in 14 different Ferraris, 20 gamer score. Ford champion, earn a medal in 13 different Fords, 20 gamer score. It's just money. Earn a medal in 14 different cars worth at least 1 million credits, 20 gamer score. Earn a medal in 8 different Lamborghinis. 20 gamer score. Lamb which is Lamborghini lover. Nissan Ninja! Earn a medal in 7 different Nissans. 20 gamer score. So challenge a lot. Earn a medal in 20 different British cars. 20 gamer score. Snake Charmer. Earn a medal in 3 different Shelbys. 20 gamer score. Well engineered. Earn a medal in 10 different BMWs. 20 gamer score. And Forza Legend, earn a medal in 146 different cars. 80 gamer score. But in the meantime, that is it for this week's edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Latter-day Saints Notification Squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Uh, chicken Run on the left, podcast on the right. I've got links to all my social media and my patreon in the description below and also a link and also uh, don't forget to check out boomerangrentals.co.uk packages start from a little 3.99 a month so there we go that is it this week tomorrow tom and jerry sins two more episodes for you uh, oh goody 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 23 days until f1 2018 goes live on my channel remember august 26th is when it goes live so until then, folks, I will see you guys tomorrow for Tommy J. Sims. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. Stay faithful as always. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.